Hey guys, what's up? Car Talker here, and uh, today I'm here with another ZX uh, tutorial. Now, um, obviously, I haven't posted one since maybe like a month or two ago, and I really apologize for that. Um, I've been busy with exam and stuff for uh, last month, and then after that, I uh, was just being lazy. Uh, I posted Vanguard content, but then, you know, uh, a lot of people have been waiting for me on that, so. Um, now I have more time to do uh, ZX stuff, which I think you guys might enjoy. I know some of you um, have been asking for it, so let's uh, get on with the um, tutorial. So let's give a quick rundown on how uh, deck construction works, so how, how many cards you need in a deck and whatnot. So for in order to build a deck, you need to first have... Uh, one uh, a start card. Um, yeah, you need a start card. Oops, start. This is start card. This is the player card. You don't have to have a player card, but um, yeah, it just represents who you are. It this card doesn't actually count as part of the deck. You need fifty cards in your deck, and yeah, so you need to have twenty ignitions. Uh, ignitions are cards with this icon on it. So you're gonna run twenty of those. Um, if you guys play Vanguard, then these are sort of like your triggers, except they don't really work the same way. But um, you kind of need them in the deck. It's the this is, I guess, one of the main luck factors in the game. Um, but the rest of the game is mostly skill based. So yeah, and then within those ignitions, you need to have. You can only put uh, there's there's some special ones it's called Void Bringers. And life recovery, and I'll show you guys those now. All right. So if you guys can read Japanese in katakana, it says uh, "life recovery," uh, "life recovery." So you can only have four of those. Uh, so it doesn't matter how uh, what how you play them in. For example, if you play two. Uh, vanilla life bringers and two uh, life bringers, life recovery, <laughs> sorry, life recovery uh, with effects, then it still counts as four, so you can only run uh, four. For void bringers, uh, yeah, these are the void bringers I'm playing for this deck. Uh, I play four of her, uh, mainly because she's pretty cute. Um, but Voidbringers, you're going to need four of them also, and uh, usually Voidbringers, they have very low attack, but they come with a special, uh, you know, pretty useful effect most of the time. Uh, yeah, pretty low effect. They're usually two cost. I don't think there's any non-two cost Voidbringers. Not, not that any that come to mind anyway. But yeah, so four life recovery and four, uh, four Voidbringers. You don't actually have to play them, but uh, you should. Um, these their effects, like the effect to recover life and destroy a monster, only works when you check them, when you damage check them. So, if you guys just ignite them, uh, they don't, you don't get to recover life. So keep that in mind. Um, it's a little too good if you can, if you can just uh, do it that way. But no. Nah. So yeah, start card, left recovery, four bringers. Those are the more important things that you need. You can play more than one start card, but again, um, you should just start with a start card. So, yeah. But some start cards have really nice effects, so you some people might want to play more than that. Like this guy, he has a pretty good effect. But yeah. So yeah, player card doesn't count as part of the 50 card deck. It's If you play a player card, then it's a uh, 51 card deck, if you want to count like that. But yeah. Alright, so that's with the deck construction. Like, the rest of the deck, you can play whatever you want. Um, I might do a ZX deck profile sometime, but um, this game is really, really, really uh, based on player preference. So, there's a lot of cards that I might use that you guys won't like, or a lot of cards that you think are good that I think might be meh. Um, but there's a general consensus on what, what's good and what's not. So, yeah. Let's uh, talk about the game preparation. Uh, I'm just—I'm actually just reading off the wiki, 
But um, uh, if you guys, you know, want to see it in a the video, then I'm just going to do this. So yeah, game preparation, uh, what you need to do is put your player square, put your player card in player square. Um, in tournaments, people like to put it face down. So, oh, you guys, you don't know what I'm playing, but you're going to reveal it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, player, player square, and then you put your start card on top of your player. So it's like, you're starting Vanguard, if you play Vanguard. Which I'm guessing a lot of you are do since maybe you're from my main channel. Right, so then uh, after you put your player square down, or put your star card down, you shove your deck and then uh, from there on, you draw four cards. Look at it. Well, oh, this is a <laughs> this is a I didn't shuffle my deck well, but um, normally you can redraw, but you you have to redraw your whole hand. So if you don't if you don't like this hand, I yeah you, you, I actually don't mind that hand because you can just stretch your opponent. But for example, if you don't like that hand, then you go all right redraw. And then you draw four cards, and it's this is even worse than before. <laughs> um, yeah, because they're, they're two thousand attack. They're uh, two thousand attack, and they are not anything good. So uh, in, in this case, then you can't withdraw anymore. Uh, you only do it once, and then after that, you take four cards from the top of your deck and put it into your life zone. Uh, here it is. Life zone is down here. You guys can't see it off screen, but uh, yeah, I'll just say screw my opponent. There's no opponent, so you put two, uh, four cards in your life, life zone, and then you t take the top two cards of your deck and put it in your resource, and then you can start the game now, cause, cause yeah, start the game, and then how the how game progression works? Uh, let's see, let's see if I can. Move some stuff away so you guys see the full, full field. I'm a little messy right now. I'm still not used to doing tutorials, and taking a huge long break didn't really help. But uh, let's see if I can pro practice a bit more. And that's the highest I can go. All right, let's see. All right, okay, uh, you can sort of see both sides of the field now. So let's just say my opponent is playing battle dress. Starts with that card, and then does the same thing I did. Draw four. Again, <laughs> I guess I just, I just didn't shuffle my decks, but uh, that's fine. Four cards in the um, life zone, and then two cards in the mana zone. So I'm not I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but uh, yeah. So let's let's see that. So let's pan it back to my side of the field. So how the game flow works is you have the reboot phase where all the things that were in rest position come back to uh, to uh, awake or reboot, sleep position to reboot. So if it's sleep, this is a reboot. It's kind of like sleep and stand um, in Vanguard. So sleeping is obviously rest and reboot is stand. Um, so uh, during your draw phase you draw two cards but if you were going first you cannot draw at all. Um, let's just say I'm my opponent went first so he doesn't draw. Pen back to him. So he doesn't draw, but he has uh, his emission phase or his mana phase, resource phase. Yes. So he takes a, picks a card from his hand and puts it into the resource, and after that is his ignition phase, which he doesn't have any uh, units in his charge right now, so he can't do it. Uh, I'll do it on my phase just to show you guys. But um, yeah. So after that, 
after ignition phase, we have the main phase, in which a player can pay the cost to play a unit, and they can attack. So during the main phase is where most of the game happens. You play ZX, you play events, and use boot abilities. And then you also have your battle phase, which is you can also battle, which is in your main, uh, main phase. So, uh, for example, on my opponent, he goes first, plays three mana. Please be reminded that you need to have a card of the same color in your mana that you play in order to play the card. For example, if I play three mana, there is one red right now, so I can play the cards that I have in my hand. And there we go. He plays unit, and then he uh, goes battle phase. Or he he, he declares uh, to battle. So he attacks my ZX, and I go, okay, he's he's dead. I can't do anything about it. So he's dead. And then let's talk about the battle procedure, which uh, happens during the battle. So he declares an attack, and whenever my opponent declares an attack, I can either um, use events or uh, boot abilities. Uh, this is a boot ability, but he only works when he's in the charge, so I can't use him while he's on the field. But if he's dead, then I can use the effect. So for example, I have a event here. I can use it if I had enough mana, but since I'm only at two mana right now, I can't use it. So uh, he has no choice but to die. All right, so if he, if he manage, if my uh, field is, if my player square is empty, then he can attack my player or attack me basically. And when that happens, uh, he deals one damage to me, and if we look down here to the damage zone or the life, life, my life, uh, you can choose which life to pick uh, to to uh, damage, and then I reveal it. So I go this one goes whoop. Um, I take a damage, but since this there's an ignition here, I can play it, and uh, lucky lucky me, she's a life recovery, so I can play the card. I'll play it here. And then recover life. You don't look at it, so you just place it straight into your life. And uh, yeah. So if the card is not a, for example, if, the, if it's like this, if I, if the card is this card that I uh, damage check, then he goes straight into the, or he goes into the uh, ig uh, ignition zone instead, or the charge. Sorry, the charge area. I don't know, I haven't played this game in way too long. So, yeah. So he goes into charge instead. And then, um, after the battle ends, and if opponent cannot do anything else, then it goes... It ends his turn, and it goes back to my turn. So let's uh, show you guys how to do the ignition phase. So right now it's my turn. Um, I draw two. I draw two, and then uh, we have the resource phase, so I ch pick a card in my uh, resource and play it. Play it there. And now I have red mana, so I can use red mana. Red units, of car uh, red cards, I mean. And then, normally I wouldn't uh, use this as a uh, ignition, but since, um, you know, for demonstration purposes, I'll just go... Um, I do a ignition, and then I reveal the top card of my deck. If it is a ignition, if it's a card with an ignition icon, then I can play it. If not, it goes to my trash. Not your charge, your trash. Uh, cards that die go to your charge, um, and yeah, cards that die go to your charge, and cards that are not ignitions that come from your life also go to the charge. Except for Voidbringers, if you get Voidbringer, if a, let's see if there's any Voidbringers here. Nope. Uh, let's say if, let's say if I attack my opponent and he checks a Voidbringer from his life, then he can destroy, immediately destroy this card and it goes straight to the trash. And then he still plays the unit. That's how Voidbringers work. 
sorry I'm a little messy, um, you know, stuff. So, yeah. And then that's the ignition phase, and then it goes back to my main phase, which I can do shenanigans. In this case, um, she was still here. I'll be like, oh, uh, what should I do? I'm just gonna play two mana and play him. And then now I can uh, explain how it works if you don't have enough power to kill a unit. So in this case, if I have, if she is 4,500 power, the unit I'm attacking has 5,000 power, then I go attack. It's not enough to kill it, but it does deduct his power. So he will only have 500 uh, power left. And in that case, I can use this 2,000 power card to attack the remaining, the remaining uh, power that's left on the opponent unit. So, yeah, it re it's received uh, 4,500 damage, so it has 500 left, and it takes another 2,000, so it's it's pretty dead, and then it goes into the charge. And yeah, so if my if I happen to attack this thing with this thing, and then my opponent has, for example, if they had an event in his hand, uh, let's use this as an example. And let's just say he has a battle dress uh, event. And he has untapped mana. So you have to pay you have to pay uh you have to pay mana in order to use events, so uh, be careful of how much mana you use if you want to use a uh, a uh, event on your opponent's turn. If you don't have enough, then uh, you're pretty out of luck. But yeah, let's just say... Okay, it's... We do the battle that we just did. So I attack. 4,500 power. Uh, he takes it because there, there aren't that many cards that can target units, uh, ZX in the player square. So... There are some, but there aren't many. So if I attack with this thing, and I want to, if my opponent wants to keep this guy alive, he can go. All right, you're attacking me, so I'll use this event. Pay two mana. And the effect for this one, you can bounce a unit back to my hand. So he goes back to my hand, and therefore he does not take any damage. And then uh, this card goes into the trash. It's used. It goes into the garbage can. Trash. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, that's pretty much the main flow of the game. Uh, the main fa after the main phase is over is the end phase, and yeah, there. Uh... Oh yeah, during the end phase, the really important thing is all damage that are done to the units or the ZX is gone. So if I attack with this thing. And it takes 4,000 power damage. At the end of the turn, during the end phase, he replenishes HP back to 5,000. So I can't attack it next turn again and be like, oh, you only have 500 left, you're dead. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to uh, kill it and you have to do all the damage to it in one turn, or else it'll replenish its HP. And then uh, another important thing is if you have seven or more cards in your, my in your hand, you have to discard it until you have six. So, for example, if I have seven cards in my hand, I'll go. Okay, I have to discard. I'll discard. Pick a card to discard, and then you just go. Okay, I'll get rid of. Uh, I'll get rid of this guy, and then you'll be you'll be good. You have six cards in your hand. So, yeah. And then all the abilities that um, say last until the, until the end of the turn uh, disappears, obviously, because it's not your turn anymore during your opponent's turn. So. So that's pretty much all um, All there is to the game flow. Uh, I think I explained the zones last video, but I can explain it again. If you guys were confused during the... I should have done this first, but uh, whatever. YOLO. I don't know why I said that, but... Alright, so... Uh, the middle here is the battle area. This is where you call all your units, 
or uh, yeah, place all your ZX. And it's a sh shared area between you and your opponent, except for your player square. So your opponent can't play any cards on your player square. But uh, he can play anything. He can play anything here. You can play everything here. So you can play this. You can play here, here, right here, 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 here. Just not here. Um, yeah, so these are called normal squares. And these are called player squares. This is called your resource because that's where you put your resources or mana. Some people like to call If you played magic, then it's your mana. Pretty similar to mana. Uh, here, you play your is where your, your charge is, and this is your life, your deck, and your trash. That's um, pretty self-explanatory. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that's pretty much there. Uh, I think that's pretty much all there is for this part of the tutorial. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to ask. And if you guys are experts in this game and someone asks a question, feel free to answer it for me since I don't always check comments on this channel since it's not uh, linked. Uh, if I, I'll check if I remember, but if I don't, then, uh, then yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!